Hello, today I'm going to create a tile map and use a tile map to do some level design in Construct. In Construct 2, or the web-based version, which is Construct 3, we can work with tile maps. Let me first show you the tile maps, as well as some of the levels, and then we'll make them. Here are four tileable backgrounds. Each one is able to tile. We'll use one. Here's an example of a level that was made with the tiled background and with individual tile bits, which we will be using in order to create these levels. And then this is an example of a tile map. You'll notice that they have this bit here. This bit has a rough left-hand side as well as a rough right-hand side. Whereas this piece has a rough left-hand side, but a flush right-hand side. So we would tile this against another solid tile. This will become a little bit more clear when we start to design our levels. We're going to create a new project. I'm going to create three layers. You'll do four because you'll have a HUD on top. This one is the background. This one will be called, well, I'll just make it called Tile Map. And then this will be our main layer. We'll select our background. We'll insert a new object, specifically a tiled background. And I'm going to name it Level 1 BG level one background and we'll place it. We'll select the file that we would like. So in our background we will go to the jungle file and click open. Notice that the width is 600. Actually the width is 800 and the height is 6. That's good. Oops, don't want to recolor those items. When I select my tiled background, I need to change the size. The height should be 600, since our height of our picture was 600. And let's make the length of our level 3000. Notice that with my background selected, there is a hot spot right here in the top left. That's this point. We want that point to be right at our 0, 0 point. So as we notice the position, changing as I move it closer and closer it's getting closer and closer to zero zero now that we have our background in position and extended the correct length we will lock it at this point I'm going to go into my project and clean some other things up first the preview browser we always want this to launch in Google Chrome our window size we would like the height of our window notice the dashed line does not include the full background so let's adjust the height to be 600 notice that did I put that on the main layer dumb dumb this should be on the background mr. shoe and then now when we toggle this on and off we see that it lines up with our window which is really what we wanted so going back to projects, selecting our project, let's make our window size the full size of the picture. So 800 by 600. I like that. Next, we're going to select our layout. We don't want this dead white space below. So the layout size needs to be changed. 600. And we'd like it to be the full length of our background. So by 3000. Here would be our complete level one. I would expect a little more from you all, a little longer than this, but for our example today this is fine. Next we're going to select tile map, layer. We will right click and insert a new object and that will be this tile map and we'll call it 
level 1 TM for tile map. And we'll place it. This is not the correct image. So we will load the correct tile map, the jungle tile map. And here is our image. It is a PNG, so it will support transparency. Notice that this part is see-through. Our rough edges will show through to our background. With my tile map open and my properties for my tile map open, the tile width is currently set to 32 and the height is set to 32. We're going to do a little math to see if this is correct. In our tile map, it's 320 pixels wide. One, two, three, four, five. There are five cells going across, or five tiles. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to take 320 and divide that by 5, 464. So the pixel value across for each cell or each tile is 64. Next we have 1, 2, 3, 4 in our height. So 256, and we're going to divide that by 4, and that's 64 as well. So this tile map is correct, but our values will need to change. This will need to be 64, and we'll also set this to 64 as well. 64, 64, position 0, 0, as it should be. At this time, we can begin to uh, create some level design here. First, let's look at the example that was given to us. You'll notice that there are some tiles that show, that make like a downward path, some tiles that make an upward path. We have some floating platforms. Um, these upper above bits come down and then have a flat bottom. Notice that there's a tileable bottom bit here as well. We'll try to set our layer up or our level up similar to what we see here. I'm going to start with a platform on this side. Um, I guess we need to figure out how to access our tile map. We'll go view and make sure the tile map bar is checked. If it is, that means you have a tab somewhere, mine is over here, that will allow you to access your tile map. I'm going to bring mine over here and marry it with my property bar as well. So when I click on the tile map bar, it opens the tile map, properties opens properties. To place a tile, you will select the pencil tool, which is selected. And then you'll pick an appropriate cell. Since mine is going to be flush with this left-hand side and extend in, I don't want to use this one because this has a rough left-hand side. This one has a flush left-hand side. There is the start. This tile would not make sense because if you look, the left-hand side is rough, but the right-hand side is flush. So with the pencil tool, right-click to remove. We would not want this one. We would want this one. And we'll put a couple of those going down. And let's probably put some solid stone bits below. Hmm. I don't like this gap. So I'm going to increase my tile map by one more cell. Or 64 pixels. So let's select our tile map. Go back to our properties. And we're going to make the height of it. 664. Notice that it's extended a bit now. With this selected and our tile map, we will go back with our pencil tool and place another block below. These two blocks have flush left and right sides. It's nice to have two because it can give us some variety. I like to write here, and then let's give ourselves an end cap. Let's give ourselves a couple stone bits in here as well, and then a rough 
right hand side and then we'll fill these in with these tileable stones. Let's add a little variety. And so every once in a while, we'll place some of these larger stones too. Not in this row because we don't want to adjust our top bit. That looks good. I'll make a kind of a cave top that comes down. We will use this rough left-hand side and put a couple of these next to each other. I would like to extend this across, so we need a kind of textured bottom piece. I think this is the only textured bottom piece. And then we need to go up. So let's choose this rough right-hand side, and we will tile that up. We'll do a mass fill. We can do that with the marquee box. I can click and drag, and then click to place. I don't like all the sameness of these tiles. So I might put some rough ones here. And some here. And then maybe erase those. With my pencil tool. A rough right side here and a rough left side there. And then maybe a few fills of these stony bits in here. Looks pretty good. Let's make a floating platform here. So we'll choose this rough left side to make a left side bit. We'll tile it with um, maybe this one right here. This has a top as well as a textured bottom. And then we'll cap it with a right bit. We could make a floating platform right here. Notice it has a rough left and right edge. And then we'll cap that with a little floating mossy bit. We will make something coming up out of the void below. Put a left end cap on. We will put some textured bits across here that are tileable and then a right end cap as well and then right edges going down we'll choose our stone bit and we'll fill these in we will select the other stone fill for a little bit of variety just so it doesn't look quite so choppy i like that look and maybe a floating platform something up here just to uh, give ourselves a bit of variety. All right. Obviously, you could see that we would need to continue this, and we would. But at this point, I'm going to select my main layer go back to my arrow tool. Once we leave a tile map menu, we always need to select that arrow. I will reopen my property menu with my main layer selected. I will insert a new object, a sprite, I'll call it character. Put them right up here, her, it, she, whatever it is, 32 by 32. Just dump some yellow on it. With the main character selected in our property menu, we'll add a behavior. We'll add two. We'll start with scroll two. That's always helpful. And platform. That's always helpful. And we will launch this. I didn't add solid, so I'm assuming it's just going to fall through. And it did. So we will need to select our tile map. Level one tile map. Go to Behaviors, click on the hyperlink, and add Solid. When I launch this, we should interact with our tile map cleanly. And we are. Beautiful. Notice that it's important to choose rough left edges and rough right edges 
Make sure your platforms tile cleanly. So use the correct tiles to start and end your platforms, your protrusions, whatever these different things you want to call them are. Um, choose the correct tiles associated in your tile map. When you're done, upload the construct file to the assignment on Google Classroom called Tile Map Assignment. 